welcome to another video in my series on basic accounting. Now just a reminder that these videos are geared towards people that are new to accounting. So maybe a high school student or undergraduate student or maybe just someone out in the general population that would like to know a little bit more about basic accounting concepts. So if you are in graduate school working on your MBA these videos probably aren't for you. However, if you are looking just to brush up on or learn a little bit about basic accounting without going into too much complexity, then hopefully these videos will be for you. So let's go ahead and dive into our topic today, the retained earnings statement. Now, if you remember in one of my previous videos, I talked about how accountants are usually responsible for preparing for financial statements. The income statement, the retained earning statement, the balance sheet, and the statement of cash flows. So of course this is the second in that list. Now lucky for us, it's also one of the most simple. There is not a whole lot that goes into the retained earning statement. So relative to my other videos, this one should go a little bit quicker. So let's go ahead and dive in. Now I will always remind you about the three primary business activities because they are so foundational to everything else we talk about in accounting. So if you remember, the three primary business activities are operations, financing, and investing. And of course operations is, you can think of that as the normal day-to-day -day activity of producing and selling products or services. Financing is how a business raises money to conduct its business activities. So it could issue stock to stockholders and of course when they sell a share of stock they get cash in return. A business could borrow money from a bank. And of course we call those loans. And larger businesses can issue bonds or issue debt to investors which usually have a term of we will pay you back the full amount at this time with some interest you know, every six months or something like that. Now investing is where the business actually invests in itself. So it might buy equipment for a new plant or buy new computers for the office or something like that. So always remember, always keep in your mind, operations, financing, and investing. Because all four reports that we're going to talk about are based on this fundamental idea. So what exactly are retained earnings? And like always, I'm going to use an example. So let's say you're a small business owner, and at the end of the year, you have a positive net income. Hooray, that's great. Now, what can you do with that income? Because it's there, got to do something with it. Well, in accounting, we usually delineate what you can do with that into two separate items. Number one, you could give all or some of it to people who invested in your business. So let's say that your business took $10,000 to get off the ground. You contributed half of that, so $5,000. And then five other individuals each invested $1,000 to make up the total $10,000. So each other person has a 10% interest in your business in terms of what they invested to get it started. And of course you have a 50% interest. Now if you wanted to, you could pay out your net income proportional to that investment interest. So person A could get 10% of your net income, person B could get 10%, C 10%, and so on. Now instead of doing that, you could keep your net income inside the business to then use on whatever you deem fit for your business's growth or whatever. And of course you could do a combination of both of those. You could pay out some of your net income to investors. Then you could also keep portion inside the business. It's not an either or scenario. You can mix and match to whatever proportion of those two you want. Now number one in this example is called a dividend. And if you pay any attention at all to the financial markets or the news even or the business page, you kind of know what a dividend is. So oftentimes you will see a company like Coca-Cola declares a 10 cent per share dividend for the first quarter. And all that means is that for every share 
of Coca-Cola stock you have, Coca-Cola is going to pay you 10 cents. So if you have 10 shares of Coca-Cola, you will earn $1 in dividend. Now number two in our example is called retained earnings. And that's where the net income is kept inside the business, most often for growth. So if the company is a young company, a startup company, or in a, in a expanding, rapidly expanding industry, then they are more likely to keep their net income inside the business than pay it out in a dividend. So many internet startup companies, if not all internet startup companies, are not going to pay a dividend. Whatever net income they have, they're going to keep it inside the business so they can grow rapidly. Because rapid growth requires new infusions of income to be kept inside the business. Another way of thinking of retained earnings is just kind of like a savings account. Instead of spending that money and handing it out to investors, you're saving it so you can use it in whatever way you see fit. So what exactly is the retained earnings statement? Now at its most basic level, your retained earnings for maybe the year is any previous retained earnings you still have plus your new net income for the year minus any dividends you pay out to investors. So previous retained earnings are just accumulated retained earnings you have kept over time. So it's kind of like a savings account that just builds up over time. And of course, as you go into a new year, you have to account for what you had at the end of last year. That's all previous retained earnings is. And of course you have net income. And that is your net income for the year. And of course that comes from the income statement, which we talked about in our last video. And in the next slide, I'm actually going to show you the relationship between the income statement and the retained earning statement. And of course the dividends paid are any dividend payments to shareholders. So the retained earning statement will subtract out any dividend payments to shareholders. And really, that's it. It only consists of really three things. So if you look over on the right, we have the Hershey Company's retained earning statement for the year ending in 2006. Now the retained earnings as of January 1st, 2006 was a little bit over $3.6 billion. And that's earnings that they had accumulated over time in the business. Now for that year, and we actually went over this in the last video, but for that year from January 1st, 2006 to December 31st, 2006, Hershey had a positive net income of 559 million dollars. But also during that year, they paid out to investors $235 million in dividends. So if we take their net income of $559 million, subtract out our $235 million in dividends that were paid out to investors, the net increase in our retained earnings is $324 million. Now, since we had retained earnings from the past, we add that $324 million to our $3.6 billion that was in the company at the beginning of the year. So our new retained earnings as of the end of the year in 2006 was $3.965 billion. And that is it. Previous retained earnings plus current net income, subtract out any dividends that are paid, and then if there's anything left over, you add that to the previous retained earnings, and that's the current retained earnings. Now I do want to show you the relationship between the income statement and the retained earnings statement. So here we have the Hershey income statement on the left, side by side with the Hershey retained earnings statement. Now we went over the income statement in a previous video, so we'll not go into that here. However, if you look at the bottom of the income statement, you will see net income of $559 million. Now over on the right hand side, you will see the add net income line 
which is $559 million. And that is how the income statement is connected to the retained earnings statement. Because any net income goes into retained net earnings if they are not all paid out as a dividend. So you can see, and it will be the case as we go, that all of the four reports are linked in fundamental ways. So this is just our first example. The bottom line of the income statement is one of the three primary factors in the retained earnings statement. And if it's positive, it gets added to any previous retained earnings. And if we pay out dividends, then we subtract those out of our net income and then basically sum it all together for our current retained earnings. Okay, and that's just about it. So let's go ahead and review very quickly. Earnings statement reports the following. Accumulated retained earnings. It's kind of like a big savings account. It's not the perfect analogy, but it's kind of like a big savings account that the company has over time. So it reports what that was at the beginning of the year. Then it reports the addition of any net income that's going to be added to that retained earnings, which we just saw in the previous slide. It also reports any dividend payments that we give to shareholders. Now this is, these are actually paid in cash, so dividends are cash payments out to shareholders. Now the retained earnings statement does not report the following. It does not report what is done with any retained earnings. That's somewhere else. It just reports whether we have them or not. It does not report any cash flow into the business. Because remember, income or net income is not cash flow. Those are not the same things. Cash flow is only when the cash comes in, maybe for something we have billed or sold to a customer. So income is not cash flow. So the retained earnings statement does not report any cash inflows into the business. Now remember, it does report one type of cash outflow, and that is dividend payments, because those are made in cash to shareholders. All right, and that is it for retained earnings. Again, thank you for watching, and I look forward to seeing you next time.